Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio and we're making an action RPG in Unity. So, you've got a character who can move around your map, but he's looking a little stiff. In this video, we'll get him animated and also get him flipping from side to side. Let's get started. So let's start this off by animating our player. First thing that we're gonna wanna do is go up to Window, Animation, and we wanna open up the Animation Pane. I'm gonna dock mine just here above my asset window by holding onto this little tab here. And what this does is it allows me to see my sprites down below and do the animation up top. While clicked on my player, I'm then gonna hit create. We'll make an idle animation first, which I'll just save in an animations folder. And now we've got this timeline here. What we can do with this is drag and drop individual sprites onto here. If you're working with the tiny sword sprite sheet, you'll see that the top six here are all associated with idling and the next six are running. So I'm just going to shift click the first six sprites and drag and drop them up here into my animation pane. If you hit play, you'll see that's very fast. So if we select everything, we can actually drag this little line here at the end in order to expand the whole animation. You can find what works for you, but I find that about 30 frames is about right. So you'll notice that this is catching just a little bit. Everything works nicely with each animation lasting for about five frames. However, this last animation only lasts for one frame and then immediately resets. To fix this, we're just gonna copy that very first frame and put it here at the end. Now, each frame of the animation will last for the same number of frames. And already we can hit play on our game and when it starts, our character will immediately idle. Already this game is looking much better. Now creating the moving animation will be more complex, but it's gonna start off the same way. We need to create a new animation. So while clicked on our player, we're gonna to go to our animation folder. Now you'll notice here I made a little mistake and I accidentally put my animations folder inside of scripts instead of sprites. I'll fix that a little bit later, but for now, I'm just gonna click on animations and we'll make our walking animation. I'll just take a second here to grab that animations folder and move it into sprites. I'll click on my warrior here and I'm gonna grab the next six animations which represent him walking. We'll drag those up to the animation pane and again, I'll drag them out until I find a speed that feels about right. Once again, there's a little hitch at the end so I'll just copy that first frame and add it onto the end to make this whole thing cycle nicely. Now that's looking pretty good but we've now got an animation that will never run. So I'm just gonna dock my animation pane down at the bottom here Go back up to Window, and this time in Animation, we're going to open up the Animator. This is just a state machine that controls all the different states our animator can move through. You'll notice at the moment, Idle is in orange. That just means it's our default state. You can always change this by right-clicking on a state and going to Set as Default State. However, we like this the way it is. Now what we need to do is create some conditions that can allow us to move back and forth between Idle and Walking. I'm gonna head over to the Parameters tab here and click Plus. So I'm just gonna create a float, remember that's a decimal number, called Horizontal and one called Vertical. I'm using lowercase for each of these. I'll then click on Idle, go to Make Transition, and we'll drag it up to Walking. Over here we can add the condition of Horizontal, and we're just gonna say that if Horizontal is greater than 0.1, essentially if it's more than zero, we want to move to walking. I'm gonna make another transition going in the same direction. We'll click on that one. And this time we just wanna make sure that if the vertical is greater than 0.1. So if either axis is above zero, we are going to move to our walking animation. Now we need to handle moving back towards idle, so we'll make a transition going the opposite direction. This one's a little different as we're gonna need two conditions. But this time we need both of these to be true for us to move. So if both horizontal and vertical are less than 0.1, then we're ready to go back to idle. Now we're not finished here, but this is enough for us to get started on our scripting. And we just need to make it so that our movement script changes these horizontal and vertical values so that they actually reflect what our player is actually doing. So let's click on our player movement script. And here we're gonna begin by just making a reference to our animator. I'll make a public animator called anim. Now we've already stored the values for horizontal and vertical button presses. Now we just need to make sure that those get passed on to our animator. To do that, we're just gonna type in anim and let it know that it needs to set its float called horizontal to be equal to this script's horizontal value. We'll then do the exact same thing for vertical. So now when we get back in Unity, we can click on our player and you'll notice that there's now a box here for the animator. The script wants to know which animator to talk to. So we'll just drag in our player's animator, and with that, we're ready to test. 
For testing purposes, I'm just gonna move my animator on the side here so we can see what's happening. You'll notice that as I move up, my vertical value changes, and the same is true on my horizontal. However, there's a few problems. First of all, my animations only work when I'm going right or up, and additionally, there's a strange lag. It seems to wait about a second before the animation starts and stops playing. Let's fix those. So first off, let's fix that weird delay. I'm gonna click on my transition, going from idle to walking, and you'll notice here that it has exit time. We're just gonna turn off exit time and set our duration to zero. Those will make it so that the animation switches immediately. We'll wanna make sure that we do that for both of our transitions from idle to walking, as well as for our transition back from walking to idle. Now the other problem is just that our player is only animating when moving right and upward. And that's simply because our conditions are set so that only when the horizontal or vertical are greater than zero does he actually animate. And when we press left, it's not greater than zero. This is a code problem. At the moment, anytime we press left, it stores that as a negative value. Same thing for pressing down. And we want it that way as that will control the direction we move. However, our animator doesn't need that. It just needs to know if it's at zero or not. And so we're just gonna come in front of the horizontal value and type math function dot absolute. All this does is convert the number that it's sending over to our animator into a positive number. We'll do the same thing for vertical. With that done, your character should now be animating in whatever direction he goes. You may notice that there's just the slightest bit of a delay. You can tweak that by, in your conditions, changing the value to less than 0.1, maybe 0.05, but I'll let you play around with that. Otherwise, we just need to get this player flipping. Now there's at least three common ways for flipping a player, but for our purposes, we're gonna use the local scale method. The way this works is if I click on my player and go to the transform component, if I change his X value on the scale to negative one, it flips the sprite. Positive one, he goes back to the right again. So we're just gonna use those values. So the first thing we'll need to do in our script is create a variable to keep track of which direction we're facing. I'm gonna do this using an integer called facing direction, and since my character is already oriented to the right, I'll make it a one. We'll change that to a negative one when we want him to face left. Now in order to make sure that he's facing in the right direction, we're gonna need an if statement. So down here in fixed update, we'll use our horizontal button press. So we're gonna do a check. If our horizontal value is greater than zero, meaning we're pressing right, and the transforms local scale.x, so the player's x variable, is less than zero, meaning he's actually oriented left, we've got a problem, we need to flip. There's also another condition, so we'll do a double line here, which means or. I'm just gonna put this on the next line for readability. We'll do the opposite situation. If his horizontal is less than zero, meaning we're pressing left, but his local scale x is greater than zero, he's facing right, we also need to flip. So if either of these two things occurs, we want to call a flip method. Now it won't like that at first, but we'll create that down below here. We'll just make a void method called flip. Now there's two things we wanna do in this method. First of all, we need to change our facing direction so we know which way we're facing. We can do this by saying facing direction times equals negative one. This will just make it the opposite version of itself. The next thing we need to do is actually flip the player by changing his local scale x value. Now it'd be nice if we could just do transform.localscale.x and multiply it by a negative one, but you can't modify a single aspect of the local scale. You need to change all of it. So to do that, we're just gonna say that the local scale equals a new vector three, and here we just need to put in the new x, y, and z values. Now the x will in fact be his local scale x multiplied by negative one. That's where we get our flipping. And the y and z we don't want to change. So we're just gonna type in transform.localscale.y and the same for z so that those remain whatever they were before we did the flip anyways. All right, let's save that and give it a try. No change is necessary in Unity and he should now be flipping back and forth just fine. You'll see that his facing direction should always match whatever his local scale x value is. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. In the next video, we're gonna add a bit of a world and get into some tile mapping so that this looks a little less blue. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.